This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory, and we're going through the practice tasks for Section 2.2 of the Microsoft Excel Expert Exam Study Guide. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do today is open up our 2.2 A workbook. I have it selected here in the file browser. I'll double click it to open it up. Next, we need to move to the student grades worksheet, and I'm going to do that by hitting control page up. Next, we're going to, for the cells in the grade column, which is column C, we are going to apply a custom conditional formatting rule that applies the four traffic lights icon set based upon the cell values. They want us to display the black icon for values less than 50, the red icon for values from 50 to 59, yellow for 60 to 79, and green for the values that are 80 and over. So I'm going to select all these values by hitting Control Shift down, and then I'm going to go into the conditional formatting menu. So you can do this with your mouse. Conditional formatting is on the Home tab, and kind of two-thirds of the way over to the right is our conditional formatting. The other way we can do it is through our Alt keys. And what we can do here is we can hit Alt, H, L, and then N to add a new rule. All right, so what we're going to do here at the bottom is we're going to format them based on their values, and we're going to use an icon set. Once we've selected icon sets, we now have to choose the icon style. This is the three traffic light, and they've asked us to use the four traffic light icon set. So we're going to click this arrow and scroll down until we find the four icon traffic light set. All right. Now what we need to do is set these values. The first thing we need to do is notice here that it says percent. And despite the fact that these values are, are likely percents, what we want to do is change this into a number. Okay, and I'll do that on all three of them so that I don't forget. As I do that, notice that it, it changed the value to zero for me. Um, so had we typed in the number first and then realized we needed to change it to number, we would have lost the value that we entered. So in this case, the value is set here to be greater than equals to, and for green we want that value to be 80. I'm going to tab to the next open box here. And for yellow, we want that to be for values from 60. And then for red, these are going to be values from 50 and higher. So notice with our greater than an equal sign. So I'm going to click OK. And now when we review our list of student grades. We notice that we have one of those four icons for each of those grade values. Sure enough, that one's less than 50, and it's got black. We have some reds here from 50 to 60, lots of yellows, and a few greens as well. Perfect. Let's move on to the next task. All right, so now on the project sheet, I'm going to hit control page down. They want us in for the cells in the percent column to create and apply a custom conditional formatting rule that applies the data bar format with the green gradient fill based on the cell values. All right, so I'm going to arrow over to the percent column. I'm going to select all the values in this, and I'm going to zoom out just a bit to make that a little bit easier for everyone to see. Now I'm going to go into my conditional formatting and create a new rule. Now, you'll notice that there is a data bar selection here. However, this gradient fill is not the fill that they've asked us for. There are a couple differences there. So we're going to go down instead to new rule and create this from scratch. All right, so we are going to go into the format style. We're going to select data bar. 
And now instead of the automatic values, we're going to change this to a number. Had we not changed this to a number and it just would have used the high and the low values, it wouldn't have shown us the full perspective. Because uh, in a percentage-based case like this, the lowest value could be 0 and the highest could be 100. And excuse me, we're going to use a percent uh, for the same reason. In this case, it automatically defaults from 0 to 100% for me. Next, we want to use a gradient fill. And we want to use the color green. Now, these colors in the selector in this section are based upon the theme that Office is set to. The ones at the bottom are standard colors. And so on the exam, it will typically ask you to use a one of the standard colors. Or if not, it'll specifically say that it wants, in this case, orange accent to lighter 60%. So you should never have to guess. You can just hover your mouse over the color and it will give you what its description is so that you don't have to worry about making any mistakes. So we're going to find the green, leave it at gradient fill, and click OK. Perfect. Now we see gradient fill with all of these based upon the value in the cell from 0 to 100%. You'll notice that 2% is just about invisible, and at 90%, 99%, it's just about completely filled. Let's move on to the next task. Next, we're going to move on to the product inventory worksheet by hitting control page down. We'll zoom out a little bit here for us. All right, in this case, we are going to create and apply a custom conditional formatting rule that applies an orange fill color to cells that can contain duplicate product names. So I'm going to select the product name column by hitting control shift down arrow and now we'll open up our conditional formatting. By hitting alt H L and N for new rule. All right, in this case, one of the automatic rules here is to format only unique or duplicate values. So we are going to select this, and we are now going to change what the formatting is going to be. So we've confirmed that it's all duplicate. We'll set the formatting, and in this case, we want an orange fill color. So in this dialog box, we're going to go to fill, we're going to select the color of orange. Perfect. You'll notice in our list here that all of the values that are duplicates have been highlighted in orange for us. Other than saving, that wraps up all the objectives, all the tasks for this objective, the first section. We'll continue on with the rest of the tasks in the next videos. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you know when I get the next video training session uploaded. And let me know in the comments section if there's anything you'd like to see different or if you'd like any further explanation on any of these items. Thanks so much for watching.